Hello, welcome to today's lesson. Today we will be discussing wind or aeolian processes as others call it. Well, these are processes which are common in hot desert areas where you have less rainfall, which equals less moisture and less vegetation that hold sand particles in place. Now, what are these processes? Well, these processes are driven by moving air. Moving air is then what we refer to as wind. Now, these processes are erosion, transportation, as well as deposition. Now, you need to understand that wind behaves like water. It's like a fluid. Né? So, therefore, it causes materials to be transported, to be eroded, and as well as to be deposited. Now, this lesson in particular is going to focus on the erosional processes as well as the transportation processes, which transport sediments and also, as a result, they uh, create certain landforms and certain features in desert areas. Okay, um, now let's take a look at the objectives. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to name and describe the erosional processes of wind action, describe and explain the landform associated with erosion, such as your rock pedestals, deflation hollows, as well as your desert pavements. And lastly, you should also be able to name and describe the wind transport processes, for example, suspension, saltation, as well as surface creep. Okay, now beginning with wind processes. Well, I mean um, processes of erosion. The first one that we have is what we refer to as abrasion now abrasion is basically when sand rock particles carried by the wind are blown against rock surfaces and scores rock surfaces away so i want you to imagine almost as if uh, you have sand in your hands right and then there's a rock standing next to you so what you basically do is throw these sand particles against that rock so as a result the the rock is being whirled away and erosion is taking place uh, on the surface of the rock. So that is basically what we refer to as abrasion. Lastly, we have attrition. Now, attrition, this is when sand particles carried by the wind grind each other into smaller particles. So essentially what happens is that as the wind is transporting, um, as the wind is blowing, I mean, uh, it picks up sand particles. Now, these sand particles are carried and in the process, they knock and rub against one another, and eventually they wear each other down, becoming smaller and smaller um, as they are carried over a distance. Now, lastly, we have deflation, which is a process of wind moving loose materials such as silt and sand particles, forming a depression. So basically what happens here is that... Um, According, basically, according to the strength of the wind, sometimes it only picks up the smaller tiny particles. So over time, if wind keeps blowing in that area, the smaller fine silt and sand will be picked up, and then it will leave like this hollow uh, in the ground. Deflation and abrasion. Deflation happens when fine loose sediment is picked up and carried away by the wind. Arid landscapes are very vulnerable to this as they lack any moisture or vegetation to hold the soil and sand together. Any rocks that were in the sand will be left behind to form a desert pavement. Abrasion happens when material carried in the wind is blasted at rock surfaces. This causes them to wear away and any rough edges become smoother and flatter. Desert rocks are susceptible to abrasion because they don't have a protective layer of soil or vegetation so they are constantly exposed to the wind. 
Abrasion is most effective up to 1.5 meters from the ground because the wind carries more material at this height. Rocks that have flat sides due to abrasion are called ventifacts. Okay, now we move on to the landforms created by erosion. Uh, uh, pardon me, that was just a short creep. I mean, um, geography is such a visual subject, so I just decided to put in that video a little bit just so that you have an idea of how this erosional processes looks like. Now, let's move on to the landforms created by erosion. The first one that we have here is what we refer to as a rock pedestal. Now, these are formed, these are landforms formed through the process of abrasion. Remember, we said abrasion is when you have rock particles hitting against rock surfaces. Okay, now they form when exposed rock consists of more resistant and less resistant layers of rock. So the wind swirl at the base of the rock, blowing sand particles against it from all sides. The less resistant layer of rock are eroded away faster than the more resistant rock. Large rocks are often eroded at the base, leaving a landform called a rock pedestal. And remember, uh, the process of erosion responsible for this is abrasion. I'll just show you a quick picture now, just in a while, to show you how this rock pedestal looks like in real life. Okay, so as we can see here on this diagram, uh, it's just a simplified version of how abrasion really takes place. So what happens is that at times you find these rocks that are in desert area, but they are made up of alternating layers of um, more resistant rock and less resistant rock, okay? So what happens is that as the wind is blowing against or uh, sand particles against this particular rock, the sand particles will erode away faster the less resistant rock which are indicated in, uh, in a creamish color here and then the more resistant rock will be eroded lastly now as you can see here at the ground and also on this diagram over here you can see that the rock is the thinnest here closer to the ground surface the reason for this is because abrasion is usually the strongest um, closer to the air surface because this is an area where the wind carries most of the material and thus more materials heat, um, uh, hitting on this uh, part of the rock so it will be eroded away way faster than the rest of the rock and then it just leaves this mushroom um, structure of a rock and this is then what we refer to as a rock pedestal. All right, again here, just more practical examples. As you can see here, clearly this rock is made up of more resistant and less resistant layers of rock. As you can see here on the diagram, you can clearly see that the, um, the less resistant rocks are eroded away faster than the more resistant rock. And then it leaves this mushroom standing structure of a rock, which we refer to it's uh, a rock pedestal. Over here, you can see that this one has fallen or maybe still forming. So eventually what happens is, uh, now you can imagine, now this rock is more heavier on the top than at the bottom. Eventually, if erosion keeps taking place over um, years and years, so what will happen is that due to the lack of support that is on the ground here, this uh, part of the rock will then fall over a... Uh, uh, because of lack of support here on the ground. Okay, now we move on to deflation hollow. This forms when sand materials are lifted by wind and carried over a long distance. This leaves a depression to form in an area from where the sand materials are carried from. Please, it's very important that, to know that usually the materials that are being carried is those finer silt and sand particles. So they are carried over from their original place and carried over a long distance. And then eventually it leaves this uh, um, structure that looks like a hollow. That is what we refer to it, a deflation hollow. A common one 
is the one that we find in Egypt called the Aquatic Depression. This one has eroded so deeper into the air surface that it reached the water table. I'll just show you pictures quickly. Mm -hmm. Okay, so over here, this is what you refer to as a depression hollow. And then again, we have another example here. As you can see, there were sand materials here, but then they were carried and transported over a long distance. And then it leaves this, um, I don't know, should I call it a hole? <laughs> I don't know, but yeah, this is what we call a depression hollow. And then we just have another example there. And then this one of water um, in Egypt, as I said, it has eroded so deeper into the air surface that it reached the water table. Okay, and then lastly, we have what we call desert pavements. So these are formed when fine materials such as sand and silt are blown away by wind, leaving a large stone and pebbles in gravel. So again here, these tiny uh, dots that you see, then this one will represent the finer sand and silt, and the black ones, the black big ones so is then what... Uh, will represent large stones, pebbles, and gravel. So what happens is that over time, as the wind is blowing, it picks up the finer sands and the silt, and then eventually leaves only the larger stones and pebbles, and that will accumulate here and form what you call a desert pavement, as it's clearly shown here. Again here, this is just another picture. Um, Indicating how they look like in real life. You see, you don't have find any sand here, but just these you know stones, pebbles, and sand particles, the big ones that are left behind after the fine sand and silt have been carried away by moving air, which we recall wind obviously. <laughs> okay, I just hope this will give you an idea. Okay. Now, moving on, we have wind transportation processes. Three processes that we have. One, we have suspension. This is when very fine sand material is lifted and carried over a long distance in the air. Remember suspension, eh? suspension meaning that they are not in contact with the ground surface. They are just suspended in the air. And then we have saltation. This is when the rough grainy sand materials bounce along the surface of the ground. Okay, so suspension is those fine, um, finer materials. By saltation, they are a little bit bigger. So what happens is that they bounce across the air surface, just that bouncing motion. They are not being suspended like here in suspension. And then we have the surface creep. When large materials such as your pebbles and stones creep along the surface of the ground. So what happens here is that some stones are so heavy that the wind, especially if you don't have strong winds, it does not carry it from the ground. So what, it, what happens is that they are just being dragged and so to say, maybe like creeper, they are like creeping on the surface of the earth, but they are not being entirely um, lifted up. The wind transports material in three different ways by suspension, saltation, and surface creep. Very fine sand that has been picked up by deflation is suspended in the wind and can be carried for very long distances, for hundreds or even thousands of miles. If any rocks are encountered along the way, this suspended material can be used for abrasion. Saltation is when particles between 0.1 and 1 millimeter in size bounce along the ground up to 1.5 meters high. Saltating material can also be used for abrasion and this explains why rocks get eroded at a faster rate closer to the ground. Surface creep involves larger particles that are too heavy to be lifted by the wind, those bigger than 1 millimeter in diameter. They are pushed and rolled along the ground and they contribute Okay, again, that was just another video indicating to you how these things happen in real life. Again, geography is a very visual subject and it's just important that you know how these things happen. I mean, not all of us can go to the desert physically and um, 
uh, observe some of these things happen so it will just be nice if i show you a video again here is just another diagram explaining how transportation processes takes place again i said the first one we have suspension so here you have wind blowing from this direction right so it picks up materials or this finer sand materials and then they suspend them in the air so basically these materials are being um, transported and they are not in any way in contact with the air surface thus the word suspension so they are just suspended in the air and then we have saltation so over here you have sand grain materials that are picked up and then dropped and then gets picked up and then drops so that is now how saltation okay so sand picks up materials drops it picks up material drops it and then the continuous process over a long period of time we call it suspension and then over here we have surface creep as i said these are larger stones and pebbles so they are not really picked up by the air because of their weight meaning that they are heavy so what they do is just they just roll so to say it's like they are rolling or just being pushed against the air surface now um i have included a quiz but for today i did not really include the answers because i trust you guys this topic is it's simple so to say i'm sure you'll be okay by answering it uh, because the questions are not really that difficult So here is a quiz. Uh, you have a recommended time of 15 minutes. So the first one, you need to describe the following processes of wind transportation, suspension, saltation, as well as surface creep. One mark each. And then you have to name the landform produced by wind. In, the name one landform produced by wind erosion. And then lastly, um, <coughs> and then lastly, you have uh question three where you need to explain the landform below how it was formed this landform name the erosional processes which leads to this landform as well as which process of transportation is responsible for the erosional process mentioned in roman two all the best guys but as for today your teacher miss nilifirwa here is where I end today. So the video that will come out tomorrow will be on um, depositional processes that takes place in desert areas. As for me, here is where I end today. Bye-bye.